In this video, I'm gonna show you how to replace your rear shocks. Let's start by making sure that we safely raise and support the rear of our vehicle with the suspension hanging. Let's make our way into the back of the car. We're gonna to have to start removing some plastic so we can gain access to the top of the shock. Now what you're gonna find for this is you're gonna have some locking tabs. They tell you exactly what to do. We're gonna twist these to the unlock position. Now we can remove this rear panel. With that one out of there, continue on and do the same thing to the forward plastic. With those panels out of the way, let's continue on to removing our jack. For that, you can come right underneath this hook, lift it up. It's held in place with a rubber band. Set that aside, remove the jack as well. Now we can start removing our plastic that goes all the way around this area. You're gonna find several mounting bolts. We'll start with a 10 millimeter in the rearward corner. Once you have that out of there, continue on towards the forward aspect. We're gonna find several mounting bolts. There's two over in this corner. You'll use a 12 millimeter to remove each of those. Let's make our way across. Switch back to your 10, make our way to this corner. Continue on by folding down your rear seats. Let's start removing the plastic. Now let's remove this rearward trim panel. Carefully reach underneath the ridge and lift it straight up. Along the trim panel, you're gonna find several push tabs. Make sure they're still intact and then set this aside. Once you have that out of the way, we're gonna continue on to each of our side panels. On the side panel, you're gonna find several 10 millimeter headed mounting bolts. We'll find one in this corner. here. Now you can grab onto the plastic hook and pull it out of place. Let's make our way over here. Now let's make our way up along the front of the panel. You're gonna find that you have a darker looking panel that attaches to this. To get this off of there, it's gonna be easiest using a plastic trim tool so you don't damage anything. What you need to do is carefully get in between the two and separate the darker panel from the light one by lifting it straight out and away. I'll make my way down along this edge just to break it free. Now I'll make my way around. Once you have it broken free, continue on and do the exact same thing on the other side of the vehicle. Now we can remove each of the side panels. Carefully grab onto it. 
Give it a little tug to break it free from the body of the vehicle. Now once you have all these out of here, the process is going to be the exact same thing for either side of the vehicle. Let's move along to our three 14 millimeter mounting nuts. The next thing we're going to do is move along to removing our wheel. To do that, you're going to remove five 21 millimeter lug nuts and then of course the wheel. Now let's make our way underneath the vehicle. If you're on the driver's side doing this, you're going to have to remove this bracket. To do that, we'll use a 12 millimeter socket for each of the mounting bolts. We'll switch to our 10 millimeter and remove this mounting bolt. Let's move along to the control arm and use our 10 millimeter again. Now we can move along to our forward mounting bolts that hold the control arm to the body of the vehicle. You're going to find three 17 millimeter headed bolts. Remove all three. Once you have that off of there, continue on to your sway bar link. To remove this sway bar link nut, if you were to look in the center of the stud, you're going to find that there's an area for an Allen head socket. Ours is rotted. The socket won't work. With that said, I'll hold on to the backside here, trying to hold on to the stud of the sway bar link. After that, I'll use my 14 millimeter to remove my nut. There we are. Now you're going to want to go over to the other side of the vehicle and do the exact same thing to the sway bar link. Once you have that separated, you can carefully grab onto that sway bar and lift it up and out of the way. Now with that out of the way, we can continue on to our 22 millimeter mounting bolt. Looking along the front, you'll find that you have a nut, but it is a captured nut, so you don't have to worry so much about holding that. Now that we have that mounting bolt out of there, we're going to have to separate this area. Now I'm going to use a pry bar for this. Carefully get in between the shock and the control arm. Once it starts to separate, I'll also start pulling down on the control arm. Let's make our way into the wheel well. I'm going to grab onto the control arm and you should be able to kind of pull on it a little bit. As you pull on it, pay attention to this area in between the sway bar and your rear shock. We're trying to create a little bit of a gap there so we can take that rear shock, push it in towards the center, and then bring it down far enough that we can take the top out of the body. Now we can lift it up and out of the vehicle. You'll want to mark the cap where it lines up with the end of the spring as a reference point. Moving along, it's going to be time to start compressing the coil spring so we can get this separated. You want to be extremely careful when you do this so whatever tool you use does not slip out of place. By condensing this spring, it's going to be under a lot of pressure 
And if it comes loose, it could potentially spring away and potentially hurt you. Once you have the spring compressed enough that you can move the top cap without any pressure, you should have the spring condensed enough to move up to the top nut. We're going to use a 17 millimeter socket to remove this nut. Be careful when you remove it so it does not fall apart and potentially hurt you on the way down. <laughs> Pay attention to your washer. You'll notice looking at it, it's concaved facing up. Now we can start separating this. I'll carefully start pulling down, being extremely careful not to shift the spring so much that it comes apart on me. There it is, friends. Let's get our rear shock reinstalled onto the coil spring. Pay attention along the base of the shock. You're gonna find that you have a dimple that protrudes lower than the rest of the area. Make sure you have that dimple lined up with the lower aspect of the coil spring. We'll bring this up and through the center. We'll get it lined up along the bottom and press it right on up and through. Once you have that on there, continue on with the Johns bumper. Now we can put on the cap. Now when you're installing the cap, it's important to make sure that you still have your alignment mark lined up properly. I made my mark so it lined up perfectly with the bottom area of the coil. I'll twist that as needed so it's as closely lined up as possible. Continue on with your concave washer. After that, use your locking nut. We'll start that on there. To tighten this, we're gonna continue using a six millimeter Allen head and a 17 millimeter ratcheting wrench. We'll use the Allen head socket to hold the shaft still while we tighten our 17 millimeter nut. Okay, so right there it's bottomed out. Let's make sure it's nice and tight. Double check your alignment. Assuming that looks good, continue on by releasing spring pressure. Let's get back over to the vehicle. Now over at the vehicle, we can start putting this back in place. You wanna make sure you have it in the proper orientation so you have two studs facing towards the rear of the vehicle and the single stud facing towards the front. Now as we put this in, I'm gonna start with the bottom first. We'll slide it in and behind the control arm, in between the control arm and the sway bar. You'll notice it only goes down so far. At this point, what we're going to have to do is try to shift that lower control arm out a little bit on the front so we can squeeze this down and through and then eventually bring it straight up into its proper position in the body of the vehicle. Okay. 
Once the strut's in place, continue on by starting on your mounting nuts. Once you have all three of them started, go ahead and bottom them out. After you have each of them bottomed out, torque them to 59 foot pounds. Make your way under the vehicle. We're going to continue on reattaching the lower shock to the lower control arm. Commonly, to get this lined up, you might have to give it a loving bonk with a rubber mallet. Let's start the mounting bolt in there. We'll push it right on through. Now that I have this mounting bolt started, you're going to want to pause before you tighten this. To tighten this, we need to have everything back together and the full weight of the vehicle back on the ground. At that point, we can tighten it and then torque it. With that said, let's move along. We're going to move ahead to the forward area here. For this, you're going to have to lift it up so you can start in all three of your 17 millimeter mounting bolts. With all three of them started, snug them up. With all three bottomed out, torque them to 48 foot pounds. Now we can get this bracket back on here as well. We'll take one side with our 12 millimeter headed bolt and start it in. There we are. Now that I have one side started in, you'd want to move over to the other side and put in your smaller 10 millimeter headed bolt. Once you have them both in there, continue on to snugging them up. Do the same to the other side. Now it's time to re-secure our e-brake cable. We'll start our 10 millimeter headed bolt in there and snug it up. Now we're gonna continue on down that e-brake cable to our next bracket. Now you'll notice on ours, our bolt was rotted and it broke. So I'll just use a wire tie to hold it in place. Now at this point, we're going to leave the rest of this still apart. It's a good idea to make your way over to the other side of the vehicle and replace that shock. Once you get back to this same exact position, you can continue. Now once you've finished putting in the shock on the other side, we're going to make our way back over here. You're going to notice that I'm raising up this side of the suspension, essentially as if the weight of the vehicle was on the ground. Now once you have this side raised, we're going to continue on to our mounting nut here. We'll go ahead and bottom that out. After it's bottomed out, torque it to 155 foot-pounds. Now that this side's torqued, make your way over to the other side of the vehicle and torque that side as well. Now we can remove our support from this area. Make your way to the sway bar links. Take each sway bar link and put it through the lower control arm hole. Take that 14 millimeter nut, start it on there, snug it up, and then torque it to 32 foot pounds. Commonly you'd want to hold in the center, but ours is stripped. So I'll use some locking pliers, being careful not to damage my boot.
Now we're at the point that we can go ahead and reinstall our rear wheels. You wanna make sure you start on all five of your 21 millimeter lug nuts. We'll bottom them out, get the wheels safely back on the ground, and then we'll torque each of the lug nuts to 76 foot pounds. Once your rear wheels are back on the ground, continue torquing them in a crisscross manner. Torqued. Now we're at the point that we can make our way back into the rear of the vehicle. We're gonna continue on by putting in each of our side panels. Let's have a look at the backside. Now looking along the edge of the backside, you're gonna find several push clips that make their way around. You're gonna to have to line those up with their corresponding mounting holes and then drive it into place. Now before I continue pressing this in, I'm gonna make my way into each of the rear doors as I go. We wanna make sure that we put that black corner piece over the gray. Now once you have the black over the gray, we're gonna continue on pressing the gray side piece into its proper position. Just go ahead and slide it down until it feels like it wants to snap in. After it feels as though everything's lined up, go ahead and give it a couple loving bonks just to drive it in. Start pressing in that black piece. Make sure it feels as though it's completely settled all the way around. Let's do the same on the other side. Let's continue on with the center plastics. Let's continue to our front hardware. We'll start in one of my 12 millimeter headed bolts. Continue on down the line. Get this started in there. Now we can put on this gray piece. Have a look from the back side. You'll notice the area that should be facing forward has three hooks. Looking at this black piece down here, you're also gonna find three holes. Line them up, roll it into position. Lock it in. Now it's gonna be time to install our jack. Let's start with this. We're gonna take the rubber band and put it under this hook. Now that I have it under there, I'll continue on with the jack. We'll put it face down. Go ahead and take that hook and bring it all the way over towards the passenger side here and click it in to the plastic. Make sure your jack's secure so it's not rattling around while you drive down the road. Now we can continue on to our rearward trim piece. Looking at this, you're gonna find that you have four plastic tabs. Looking at the body, you'll find four holes. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you line this up, but before you put this in place, reach down into this area. We're just gonna lift up on this black area here, slide this rear trim under it, and then we can put the trim in position. We'll line up all four of those push clips and then drive them in. Continue on with your 10 millimeter headed mounting bolts. Snug them up. Okay. 
Let's move along to our larger plastic panel. You're gonna find that you have a plastic tab that comes down, and then looking at the body, you'll find an area for it to protrude into. Gonna be one on each side. Go ahead and line them up, slide it in, lock it down. Let's continue on to our plastic hooks. Looking at the back side of the hook, you're gonna find you have a singular locating tab on the top, and then along the bottom, you have a push tab. Once that slides in, we can lock it in with the mounting bolt. We'll do the same to this one. Now we can continue to our lower hooks. Looking at the back side, once again, you have a locating tab. Looking along where the hole is, you'll find the area for the mounting bolt, and then directly above it, you have a hole. Get it lined up, start in that mounting bolt, snug it up. Make sure that's nice and tight. Now let's make our way back here. We'll put on this one. Make sure that's tight. Now do the same on the other side of the vehicle. Now it's time to put our seats back up. Make sure you grab onto that seat belt buckle and the belt itself. Pull it aside, put your seat up. Make sure that's completely secure. Rest the seat belt as needed. Do the same on the other side of the vehicle. Okay friends, we showed you how to do the rear shocks on your vehicle. At this point, you wanna go ahead and take it for a road test. Listen for any funny noises and then get yourself safely down to your local alignment shop. Thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.